And now, our feature presentation. Talk to Ted Rochek. Is it business or personal, mister? We're kind of busy here, you know. Too busy for me to report a fire? Where's our fire? 215 Richards Canyon Drive. Hey, Mr. Matisse, what are you doing here? Ted, this guy says there's a fire up in Richards Canyon. I said I want to report a fire. I didn't say when. I don't understand. What are you talking Neither about? Neither do I, Mr. Matisse. What's going on? There's going to be a fire at my place in the canyon. There's going to be? Well, that rat Calgin wants to get me. And burning my place is obvious. You have to stop him, Ted. Look, maybe we ought to talk to my dad. Let me put it this way, Mr. Matisse. If your son Mickey and my son Ted weren't such good friends... You think I was a crank? Huh? Yes. Look, I'm going to tell you one more time. Calgin said that if Mickey doesn't stop seeing his daughter, and this is a quote, you'll be sorry, he said. Well, that doesn't mean he was going to burn down your property. I know Calgin. He'll try and get me where it hurts the most. I really don't think... Well, that... I got a feast or the whole place will go up in ten minutes. Dad... Maybe Mr. Matisse should see the police. It's not the same thing you do. Nothing they can do. What do you want to do? Burn down first? I demand protection. Look, officially, there's nothing... Code red, code red. Task Force 1, Engine 23, Battalion 6. Respond to a reported structure fire at 215 Richards Canyon Drive. My house. I told you. I told you. Time is 1535. OCT clear. Turn after these messages. We continue now with Code Red. Let's get over to the other side. Watch out! Don't go in there. They stay way out of the way, huh? Mike, get the rubbish hooks and the pipe poles and separate those bales. We gotta get to the seat of the fire. Right, Al, let's go. Okay, everybody, we gotta clear this area. Please move back towards the fence. Back behind the fence, please. Keep it moving. Fast behind the fence. Get a hose right with that. 
Investigating the cause. We have to tell your father. Yeah, I doubt if he'll believe us. I want Dal Calgin arrested. We will be talking to Mr. Calgin during the investigation. Talking? I want him behind bars. There are certain specific procedures we must follow. My son, your son, best friends for years, they grew up together. Doesn't that mean anything to you? It means a great deal to me personally. But professionally, I have to do things as I see fit. I get the picture. You got your procedure, my place burns. Well, talking and investigating is not my procedure. Why doesn't he believe you? Well, he's angry. And he wants to believe what he wants to believe. That's weird. A man comes down to the station to report a fire that hasn't even happened yet. Sure enough. I'm going to tell him what happened. Vicky? <laughs> Ted! Hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> What's it been, two years? Yeah, yeah. That's our family picnic. Remember, my cousin's wife decided flag football. Hey, that never would have happened if you hadn't dropped that beautiful touchdown pass I threw. Yeah, nice talk. <laughs> oh, uh, Ted, I want you to meet my fiance. This is Beth Calgin. Well, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wait a minute. You don't happen to be related to the man that Mr. Matisse has been going on about, do you? He's my father. Oh, boy. Sounds like you two got some problems. Yeah, speaking of problems, you know, I think my dad's headed out to your farm. I better catch up with him before him and your old man get into something. Okay. Good to see you, Mick. All right, I'll see you. Okay. Do you have any idea what happened here? Yeah, I do. Would you mind telling me what you know? Uh, it was me. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What was you? Me, I'm the one. I started the fire. and stuff. And stuff? It's crazy. What is? Everything. Oh, come on now. You're beginning to lose me. Mickey and I love each other, but our fathers hate each other. Why is that, Beth? I don't know. They used to be great friends. They grew up together. My mother says that they were like brothers. If they were like brothers, well, how come they hate each other now? I wish I had the answer. They had some kind of argument. My mother would never tell me what it was about. Beth, you were going to tell us how the fire started. Sorry. Well, uh, I was smoking. Mickey keeps after me to stop smoking. Oh, good for him. The fire. Yeah. Well, we were sitting on the bales of hay, and we kissed. I just dropped the cigarette. I mean, I forgot I even had one. I mean, when Mickey kisses me, are you telling me that when you dropped that cigarette on that bale of hay, the fire started just like that? No. We went to walk, and when we got back... The fire. Yes. I see. Dad, stop. Are you here to help or get in the way? But Calgin didn't do it. What's going on here? Matisse, what are you doing on my property? 
I warn you, Couch, and I will get even. Or what? You didn't do it, Dad. Do what? Set fire to my feet, trying to burn me out, but it I... It wasn't him, it was us. The last thing I do, I... What did you say? It was us. Look, Beth was smoking. The cigarette fell in the hay Why by not? accident. What's Beth got to do with this? Oh, great, you sent your daughter to do your dirty work. Are you talking about? Both of you not you both, both sound ridiculous. You set the fire, I will get even. And you. You try to see my daughter again. Your dad's going to have something to get even for. It's the official fire report. We've established the cause as careless smoking. Ted. Sir. I'd like you to take this over to Mr. Matisse. Maybe he'll relax when he realizes that Beth's father did not try to burn him out. I'm afraid not. He'll probably just think my father set me up to do it. Hey, that's crazy. Oh, well, tell me about it. All we want to do is love each other and get married, and our fathers are at war. I don't think this will stop till somebody gets hurt. We'll return after these messages. We continue now with Code Red. I know she tossed it. I don't need a piece of paper to tell me. She didn't torch it, Mr. Matisse. It happens too many times all over the country. Someone is careless with a burning cigarette, and before you know it, this is what we end up with. Well, don't tell me about Dal Calger. He declared war 25 years ago. You're way off base, Dad. You weren't even born when this all started, so don't you tell me anything. The fact is, Mr. Matisse, you are off base. No one is declaring war on you with this fire. It was an accident. All you kids think you know all the answers. You don't need to know the right questions. Your father doesn't make it very easy, does he? Yeah, he doesn't know the word. Well, what did happen? What, 25 years ago with him in Calgary? I don't know. I keep asking him a hundred times. He keeps telling me the same thing. It's none of your business. But it is. Beth and I want to get married, and those two guys are carrying on like they're the Hatfields and the McCoys. But you think your father might actually do something to get even? Yeah, I'm afraid so. You had your daughter start. This is the bill. You pay for the damage to my property. You're the one who's going to pay, Matisse. Now get out of here. You're going to pay. You're going to pay. the difference. My vote? You voted we could spend the house dues on this baby. Oh, I did. When? Your name was up on the blackboard in the rec room. Come on, let's clean up. Hey, you Yo, got it. That's great. Hey, what's going on? I don't understand. I didn't vote for any new TV. Oh, that's okay. I voted for you. You voted for me? Yeah. What makes you think I want a new TV? Well, what's the matter? You don't want it? No, that's not it. This thing must have cost about 300 bucks. I could have had the old one fixed for 50. How was I supposed to know that? That's Matt? exactly the point, Ted. Look, come on, Chris. I'll make it up to you. Buy yourself. Come on. Ted? Hey, Mickey, what's wrong? Trouble? Got to talk to you. Sure, come on. And you know my dad, Ted. He's stubborn, but not crazy. Except when Calvin's name comes up. And Beth says the same thing about her father, right? Yeah. And it's really getting out of hand now. After what my dad did, Calvin's gonna be aching to get even. Problem is, I don't know what to do to stop this thing before someone gets hurt. Okay. You talk to your father, that didn't work too good. 
Have you tried reasoning with Calgin? Are you kidding? He sees me and starts to steam like a tea kettle. Hey, I tell you what, Mick, why don't Chris and I give it a go, all right, Chris? Well, we'll take a ride out to Calgin's place, first chance we get. We'll lay it out there and try and make him see the light, okay, Chris? I don't know how to thank you guys. Hey, it's what buddies are for. Huh. See you later, Mick. All right. Well, looks like we got another problem to solve, huh? Not quite. What do you mean? Didn't we just have a discussion about you volunteering me without asking first? Yeah, sure, about the television set. But what's that got to do with this? This is important, Chris. Ted, to you and to them it may be, but to me it might not be. That's pretty cold-hearted, man. No, it isn't. Just I'm sick and tired of you telling me what I should be doing. Wait a minute, Ted, Chris, what are you guys doing? Danny, this is between Ted and me. Just lay off. Yeah, but Ted didn't mean anything. He just... Danny... Hey, don't take your bad mood out on him. I'm not in the bad mood. I just don't want to get involved in somebody else's family I'll tell problem. you something. You don't have to, okay? Wait a minute, Ted. Chris, don't let him leave. Talk to him. Tell him you're sorry. I don't have anything to be sorry no, for. No, I think you got plenty to be sorry about to start with, like walking out on your friends. That's it. I've heard enough. You know, you always get me involved in things I don't want to be involved in. Just count me out. Hey, Chris. Don't talk to me. Keep it to All yourself. Right, fine. Keep Never it to yourself. Forget it. Fine. Come on, Ted. Chris. Hi, Chris. Nice picture on the TV, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, would you like some more coffee? Yeah. Not much happening today. It's kind of a relief. Chris. Chris. Do you even know I'm here? Oh, I, I know you're here. I'm just, I'm just concentrating on this. Oh, you must be. Because ten minutes ago when I passed by here, you were staring at the exact same page. It's a good page, okay? Huh, okay. It's a funny thing, though. I got the exact same treatment from your brother a little while ago. Except he's upstairs lying on a bench trying to read the ceiling. <laughs> That's just like him. What's just like him? Always wrapped up in himself, brooding. You know, he makes such a big deal out of everything. <sighs> Must be a family trait. What? Oh, nothing. Forget it. You want to play some cards? Sure, go ahead. Be my guest. Oh, thanks. Want a game of solitaire, Haley? Okay, thanks very much. Don't mind if I do. Oh, oh, oh. Would you please take it easy? I would like those pots and pans to last a few more years. Sorry, Mom. I guess I'm sticking to something else. Uh huh. Or someone else? I can't fool you. Can you have me those, please? Oh, no. Oh, no. In your mood, I wouldn't have enough dishes left to feed your father and Danny for one meal after you got through with them. It's just trying to help. No, you're not. You're trying to hide. Now, would you just get out of here, and I will bring in the dessert? Is he still out there? He? You make it sound like Boris Karloff was lurking in our living room. Who? Oh, never mind. I think I'm just going to go on home to my place. Chris, you and your brother have been growling at each other all through dinner. Now, I don't think that sets a very good example for Danny. You two are his heroes, and you are behaving like you were about three years old. Well, don't tell me about it. I am telling you about it, and now you tell your brother. Now go. So there I was, scrambling for my life, looking for an open receiver, and then, bam, I run right into the referee. <laughs> and his mom and I were watching in the stands. We didn't know what happened to him. He only got the wind knocked out of him. I'll be a little more serious than that, Chris. Look, Dad, I'm going to take off. I'll be on the boat if you need me. I got to go, too, Dad. Hey, stick around. I got some records we can listen to. Maybe another time, Dan. Well, the pie is cold, but if you'd rather have it heated. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm not going to stick around here. Pretend like I'm not steamed. I'll see you later. Just a minute. Did what you... am I supposed to do, Mom? He doesn't listen to me. I'm tired of trying. That'll be it. You know I will not stand for rudeness in this house. Why don't you just sit down and be quiet, both of you? No. No, if my two sons are so caught up in themselves, they can't think of anybody else they can both leave right now. Just go! Go! Out! Oh, 
myself. They have it coming to them. Well, of course they did, but I wasn't very smart about it. No. Stupid argument. I can't remember how many times I've given in just to make you happy. The only thing you can do to make me happy is just to stay away from me, all right? Fine, fine, that's fine with me. Hey, boys, easy now, eh? Just talk it over quietly. Look, there's nothing to talk about, Dad. Which means that there is something to talk about, but you don't want to. I'm going home, Dad. Good night. Well, I sure like to know what's going on between you two. As my father is the chief. I'm sorry you even feel you have to ask that question. Look, I'm just bugged, Dad. It has nothing to do with you. Oh, it better not. I've been doing you a favor all night by not kicking you out. Your mom beat me to it. Would you tell her I'm sorry? Tell her it's just something that Chris and I have to work out alone, okay? Yeah. Okay. But, son, don't for long, huh? You don't need the aggravation, and neither do we. I can't. Take it on to Danny. They'll work it out. Yeah, but they're brothers. They're not supposed to hate each other. Oh, don't let them fool you. They really love each other very much. They sure don't act like it. Well, sometimes things come up between brothers and they act uh, a little less than loving. That's dumb. I mean, they don't even know how it is not to have a mother or father or even a brother. It's lousy. I know. They don't even know how lucky they are. Maybe you should tell them that. Me? Every time I try talking to them, they just say, back off, Danny, we'll handle it. Makes me feel dumb. Dumb you are not. As a matter of fact, right now, you are a lot smarter than Chris or Ted. Tell you what, why don't you and I go out to the kitchen, warm up that pie, maybe a little ice cream on it, make us feel a lot better. What do you say? Come on. Turn after these messages. Somehow, I thought when I proposed to a girl, she'd laugh or cry. Be so happy, it would be ridiculous. You look as if I just proposed a suicide pack. But tomorrow? I say we get our blood tests tomorrow and get married a few days later, yes. I'm scared. Either we make a move together or apart. Now, which is it, Beth? Come on. Where? Come on! He won't listen. Dora? Hello? Hiya, baby. What are you doing here? What did I tell you? You're not welcome in this house. Now get out of here before I throw you out. What is this with you? What have I ever done to offend you? Just because you and my dad got into some stupid thing 25 years ago. Stupid! What did I tell you? Father was in love with my wife. That's right. Why to marry her? But she chose me. Me! When your mother died, you know what he did? You know what your father did? He. No, look, I, I just want you out of here. I don't expect to see you again. Got it? I don't expect to see you here again. I never knew that. Mom, what is Daddy talking about? It's, it's just that one night, Nikki's father came over to the house and, and said to me that 
if I got smart and left your father, why, he would devote the rest of his life to me. Did Daddy hear that? Unfortunately. Oh, but he didn't mean to be disrespectful to your father. He was just drunk, Mickey, and, and grieving over your mother's death, that's all. Well, I feel sorry for both of them. So do I. Look, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I'm gonna try and talk to Dad. Okay. Well, look, with or without his permission, we're going for it, right? Uh-huh. Good night, Mrs. Couch. Oh, good night, Mickey. Alabama girl kisses me. from a building. See, this is the kind of knot that firemen trust their lives to. Amazing. Simply amazing. Pretty soon you'll be able to tie your own shoelaces. Very funny. I thought so, too. But wind's blowing pretty rough out there. If it keeps up, I won't be able to take my chopper up. I got news for you. If it keeps up, we're going to go to work pretty soon. What's that about? What? The shaking your head routine. You disapprove of the song, too? You a little paranoid? Look, there's a difference between being paranoid and finally wising up, Chris. There's a difference between working and playing. What's that supposed to mean? Well, look at Danny. He's working with Martelli. He's learning something new. Rags is outside working with the breathing apparatus. What's Chief Warchek's youngest son doing? Sitting here playing the guitar. Look, let me tell you something. Don't come in off the street judging me. For your information, I've been upstairs for the past two hours cleaning the dormitories, the lockers, the showers, and in fact, the whole second floor. And in case you've forgotten, brother, a rested firefighter handles the action a lot better than a loudmouth who talks a good game. Let me tell you something, Ted. Listen, I know you guys are going to tell me to back off again. Why don't you just talk to each other and try and straighten us out? Can't talk to myself, Danny. Yeah, well, you can forget trying to make me the heavy, because I'm not. Will you guys just stop it? Just stop it, okay? You're brothers. You're supposed to love each other. Why don't you? You guys are nuts. You know something? You're too much, both of you. Come on, the children are at it again. Let's get out of here. Hey, wait a minute. I've never seen them like this. I've never seen them like this either. I thought the whole thing would have blown over by now. Look, I don't want to stay out of the rec room just because two grown men can't keep their brotherly spats under control. Hey, get off my back. I got you out of there for your own good. Look, everybody on this ship shouldn't be locking horns. This isn't my fight. I just wanted to read a book. No, Haley, you got it wrong. We're supposed to be a family here. I mean, a firefighting family. Things are so bad, the two of us won't talk to each other. It brings everybody down. I mean, it's like you and I got a family responsibility, you know? Okay. Then let's go tell the captain. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Listen. You go tell Benton. He's gonna call him to attention and tell him to toe the line. He can't make them bury the hatchet. You're right. But I don't know what to do about this. I never had a sister to fight with. I did. I had two of them and four brothers. I mean, there was never a dull moment in that house. 
Okay, then. What's the answer? I don't know. There's nothing more useless than a family fight. It's so stupid. Chris, Chris. Haley and I were just talking. Is there anything we can do? Yeah. You stay clear. It's between Ted and me. No, no, not exactly it's not. I, I mean, it affects the whole station. We're a family, too, sort of. Yeah, I don't believe this. I'm getting it from both sides. I'm getting it from my folks. I'm getting it from you guys. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You're getting it from us because we care about you. We're trying to tell you you don't have to go it alone. And we're not taking sides. Maybe we could talk to Ted for you or, or talk to you for Ted. Or... Yeah, I appreciate everything you're trying to do. I, I really do. I don't know what else there is to do. Well, why don't you try looking at it objectively? Yeah, wh why don't you think about it as somebody else's problem? Think about how it looks to us. That's just it, you see. It's not somebody else's problem. It's my problem. It's all mine. Just the blood test. It'll hardly hurt. That's not what I was thinking about. Well, what's the matter? You changed your mind. Daddy's really hurt. And you want us to pay for his pain? I just want to wait. Please. Bye, Beth. After these messages. We continue now with Code Red. kid's pretty upset. I know that, Alan. Hey, it's not my fault, okay? It's not your fault. Why don't you grow up? And why don't you and your big brother stop acting like little kids so the real kid can feel good again? All right, you want me to talk to Danny? Okay. Where is he? I'll talk to him. You can't talk to him. He went home. He'd rather sit at home and study than be with you guys. Things are pretty bad when the kid makes that kind of a choice, huh? Thank <laughs> you. 
Get away back. All the way back there. Mr. Captain. I'm going down this ladder. Mr. Calgan, we'll put out the fire. You get down the ladder. You know what's done this fire? Deep. Well, I want to tell you. Captain Tiskin started this fire. Talk about it later. Let's put out the fire first. Why don't you let know if that's all? All right, start setting the shingles. Set the ladder. I'm going up. Come on, right through. Martelli, cut the electricity to this house as quickly as possible. You got it, Chief. Ted, get up to the attic. All right, Dad. Get the roof, now! Chief, the fire hasn't jumped to the attic yet. We got some lines up there. All right, get salvage covers for the furniture in case it gets water off. I'm on my way. damage the Matisses are going to do our family. I guarantee you that. That's ridiculous. Mickey never started this. He was here. I saw his car. I was with him until he left. You expect me to believe you? Well, if you don't believe me, you may as well not call me your daughter. Uh, yes, it looks like it. Think there's any chance of it burning underneath the shingles or up in the attic? Oh, well, we're looking at that right now. Look, Chief. I don't want to talk too loud because my daughter's already plenty upset. But uh, I just know that Matisse has had something to do with this fire. Either the boy or his father. And I want him arrested. Exactly what Mr. Matisse said when he talked about his fire. He wanted you arrested. Oh, I didn't start that fire. No, that, that was my daughter's cigarette. No, 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 no. That was an accident. And what makes you think this isn't an accident? Because Matisse is after me, and I know it. You're still blaming Mickey. Keep on. Yeah, I will. All of this. And out of your life. Where are you going? To beg Mickey to take me back and marry him. <laughs> I want to show you something. I think this may be the cause of our fire. Oh. Take a look up there on the roof. I think you may be right. Yeah. Practically no insulation up here. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Well, sir, I know exactly how the fire started. The wind came along, hit the wires, and they arced. The sparks ignited the shingles, and it went from there. Faulty wiring, Mr. Kelsey. That was the cause of your fire. Accidental, yes, maybe. But your fault. Had nothing to do with the family feud. Watch yourself, it's slippery. Mr. Calgin. Yeah. 
saw the look on your face when your daughter took off. She had not have done it. Daughter shouldn't run from her daddy. Well, maybe her daddy pushed her. Are you a fireman or a counselor? Hey, you want me to butt out? I will. No, no. It would be good for this thick-skinned, stubborn man to hear from somebody else. Now, Dora. You love your daughter more than your own life. But you can't live her life. She's 18. This is the 20th century. She has to do what she has to do. And not what Papa says. So you too, huh? You're sliding in with the Matisses, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. Of course not. I'm on your side because I love you and that's for life. But if because of your stubbornness, I have to watch you grow old instead of rocking my grandchildren, well, I guess I'll have to live with that too. Dora, a Matisse. Mr. Calgett, you didn't start the fire at the Matisse place no more than they started this fire. And do you understand that? Yeah, I guess so. It's more certain than a guess, Mr. Calgett. All right, so? So I was thinking maybe you could figure out a way to put an end to this war the two of you got going on between you. Still have your grandchildren to boss around. We can get to the doctor before he closed. Why should we go to the doctor? Oh, I just thought we might take a blood test. You did, huh? Yeah, I did. What for? They tell me that we have to pass a blood test in order to get married. Anyone I know? If you don't hold me soon, I'll scream. What is this? This is a hug. And this is a kiss. And this is two people in love getting into a car and going into town for their blood test. I'll drive. Property. I want to know where they're going. Get a blood test. Now get out of here. You talked to him into getting married, didn't you? I'll be dumber than you are, Calgin. I'd rather my son marry a penguin than marry a Calgin. You know, Matisse, someday I'm going to put an end to your insults. Oh, you insults? It's you! Me! It wasn't me that insulted my wife. It's 25 years ago, Calgin. 25 years. If Vera had died, I was wrong. I'm sorry. What else can I say? Matisse, you still here? I've been waiting 25 years for that. For what? For an apology! You ignorant pride thinking jerk! If you give me half a chance, I would have admitted that I was sorry, but no, you ought to keep on threatening. Oh, what do you think I am? A little girl who's gonna turn to tears when a man threatens me? Yeah. I'm sorry too. I can't hear you. I said I'm sorry too, and I didn't start your fire! I didn't start your fire either. So, Matisse! So, Calgin! Well. Our kids are going to get married, with or without us. What do you think? I think maybe with us would be better. What do you think? I think for the first time in 25 years, a Calgian agrees with a Matisse. Not now, Danny. But Drop it, Danny. I'm sorry, Chris, but if you and Ted don't get back to being brothers real soon, I'm gonna explode. Look, buddy, sometimes two people have to just work things out for themselves, okay? I tried to tell you that the other day. Hey, don't turn my words around on me. Not one more word. I've got two more words before this whole ridiculous argument is over and done with. 
Which one? Which one what, Dad? I had a call from Mr. Calgin, and he informed me that one of my sons was very pushy and personal with him. Which one? It wasn't me, Dad. He said the name was Rorchek. That this Rorchek had done him probably the biggest favor of his entire life. Hey, it wasn't me, Dad. Brothers. They always stick together. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Well, maybe it's time we listen to you, brother. You win, Danny. Now, for you, hey, Chris, it wasn't me, remember? I'm sorry, brother. It's not time. <laughs> okay, no more fighting, right? All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Next time this happens, you better take care of us right away, buddy. Hey, it better not be your next time. Hey, that's a deal. That's a deal. All right! <laughs> we'll return after these messages. We continue now with Code Red. Yeah, I really doubt it, guys. Please. Look, it would really solve things, Ted. Mickey, I'm not in a position to say yes or no. Well, then who is? Well, the chief. And my father insists that the wedding be at his house. Oh, don't say any more. Mickey's father insists it be at his house. You got it. Well, I can appreciate your dilemma, but I really don't know where we fit in. Well, the only way we could solve this is to find neutral ground. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I think I know where you're leading to, but uh, I don't think that'd be possible. Please. See, if it hadn't have been for the fires and your help, I don't think we'd be here. You're losing me. Everything sort of came to a head as a result of the fires. And our fathers finally shook hands. See, and if we could get married here. Uh, this is a fire station. It would be a quick ceremony. Really brief. Please. Please? Dad, don't just sit there. Say something. Please? <laughs> and do you, Beth Calgin, take this man, Mickey Matisse, to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you, Mickey Matisse, take this woman, Beth Calgin, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. With the power vested in me as a minister in the state of California, I now pronounce you... <laughs> Don't stop now. Finish the ceremony and then move over to one side. Remember the power vested in me. I can now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. What? He said you could kiss the bride. We'll return after these messages.